Hello, aviators and Mooniacs, whatever brings you here. Welcome to the Z-Man YouTube channel. Today we are going to do a video I've been wanting to make for a few weeks now, ever since picking up my airplane from its recently completed avionics install. Uh, going to be reviewing the Garmin glass panel here. I wanted to wait to make this review until I felt like I had enough hours on the system to be able to speak to its functionality and have a uh, good understanding of how everything works and making sure that I'm getting the most out of it. So at this point, I've got about uh, 29 hours on the new system and I'm loving it. It's, uh, it's really great. I have the 10.6-inch uh, G3X, the G5, GFC 500 with electric pitch trim, GMA 245 audio panel, GTN 650XI, GNC 255A as a backup, and a GTX 345 ADS-B FISB in-out transponder. So we got some decent weather today up here near the Rochester, Minnesota area. I'm just doing a little VFR cross country up to Uniform Bravo Echo. Uh, that's uh, Cumberland Municipal. So it's about, let's see, it's about 78 miles from here. So I'll just record on the way up there and we'll go through my thoughts on the new system, why I chose some of the equipment that I did as compared to some of the competitive options, and how I'm liking it so far. This video is not a how-to, it's just a end user's thoughts and end user's perspective on it. I've got a bunch of G1000 time, well, maybe not a bunch, but I've got about 450 hours or so of G1000 time. At this point, I've got about 45 hours or so on the G3X and about 30 hours on the rest of this stuff. So I'm going to work my way from left to right here, starting with the G3X. Again, not a how-to, just a yeah, end user's just an end user's review of my purchase and how I'm liking it so far, and comparing it to some of the competition. So the G3X here. If you're watching this, you're probably already familiar with the G3X. You probably already know a lot about it. Uh, it's a great system, very clean layout. We've got all of our critical flight information, as well as highly configurable windows. You can change these windows down here. Right now, I just have them set up for traffic. You see, we can change the range here on the traffic. And then our flight plan is on this side. But you can change these to a number of different things. On the right side, got our engine monitor tap it open, tap it closed, and at the top we have our waypoint. I'll show you the uh, lean assist here. So going on the lean assist, and I'm going to lean it out just a little quicker than usual so you guys can get the idea of what it looks like here. So as the mixture comes out, those EGTs are going to come up. And now we just hit peak on cylinder number three. So we're going lean to peak right now. I'm going to enrich it just a touch and we'll cruise it peak EGT. Okay, we're right at peak EGT. We're at least close enough for government work. Some of the other information on here, gallons, uh, quantity in our left and right tanks, gallons per hour. We've got the power pulled way back today since I'm just cruising for fun. Uh, fuel pressure, volts, amps, uh, showing you some more fuel information over here. All good stuff. Going through some of the other pages. These maps are all highly configurable. So here I've got the FISB weather showing where the weather is. You can see some of my old track logs there that I haven't cleared out yet. Got the Minneapolis class Bravo on the left. It's set up to give me airspace alerts if I'm, uh, if I'm about to intercept some airspace. And you can see the rest of my flight plan here. If I loaded an approach, you'd be able to see the approach on the map as well. So lots of good stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and click on an airport. So we'll just click on the destination. Pull up. You got all this really good info here. Frequencies, runways, weather, the most recent weather was reported 13 minutes ago. Notums, an AOPA directory if you choose to keep that up to date, and instrument approach charts, airport diagram, takeoff minimums, that kind of stuff. Again, you got to keep the AOPA and the charts up to date with your Garmin subscription. Moving on here, 
we got the chapter or chart page rather. So this is just a VFR chart. Uh, got an IFR chart here if you want to be using that and so forth. Uh, waypoint information I just showed you, flight plan, weather, all this good stuff, cloud tops, winds aloft, temps aloft, air mitts, sig mitts, TFR information, train, traffic, so you can click on them, get your get their information. So this guy, 78 Yankee, getting his ground speed course. He looks like he's about maybe 18 miles away or so. GPS. And then we got our CHDs, EGTs, engine, instru uh, engine instrumentation, that kind of stuff. So why the G3X over some other options? Primarily what comes to mind is the Dynon. What also comes to mind is the Dual or uh, triple GI-275 install. So why the G3X over some of those? Well, for me, I was getting an extensive job done, an extensive avionics job. The old panel had a lot going on behind it. There was a lot of chafed wires, a lot of things that were not working the way that they should. So I needed to get pretty much everything in the panel replaced. And when you're doing a job that, that's, that is that extensive, you're looking at a new engine monitor, you're looking at getting rid of the vacuum system, uh, you're looking at, at basically removing the entire original electrical system. So there's a lot of work that needed to be done. And with that amount of work, it makes sense to go in and just replace everything, scrap the whole original panel and start fresh. So the G3X was actually the most economical option when you look at it from that perspective. So the comparable Dynon, uh, for example, um, or rather, let's start with the GI-275. So why didn't I pick the GI-275s? They were on the table. The avionics shop and I did seriously discuss doing the GI-275s. And after looking at how much it would have costed to do a triple GI-275 setup with the attitude indicator, the HSI, and also an engine monitor, it really wasn't that much more expensive to go up to the G3X and then you've got the really intuitive touchscreen display with the synthetic vision, really great uh, EIS interface along with all of this other easily manipulated information as I just showed you. So I was, I was seriously considering the 275s to save a little bit of, of money and honestly, I'm so glad that I didn't go with the 275s. They are a good option for certain like people in certain, in certain certain situations. Course, they're built from the ground up to be certified. Uh, they, I know that they're very popular in the in the certified community, and they're a great little unit. But for me and and what I was doing with having the entire original panel re, re basically scrapped and rebuilt, the the best option hands down without a doubt was the G3X. It is super awesome, and I'm so glad that I went with the G3X option. So moving on here, we got the backup instrument is the G5. Again, why the G5 over the GI-275? Basically, the G5 is its own independent source of AHARS information. So if the, if the G3X AHARS source fails, I can continue to use the autopilot flying the G5. I don't know for certain if that if the uh, GI-275 will continue to fly the auto uh, autopilot in the event of a G3X AHARS failure, but I do know that the G5 will, and honestly, I think the G5 looks better next to the G3X and the other the other stack here, it fits that square form factor. I, I think it's just all kind of built to, to fit together. Uh, also, Garmin originally designed the G3X and the G5 as instruments to be working together, so they speak the same language, if you will, and they're, they're, they were designed from the ground up by Garmin to work together. Also, just what I use the G5 for pretty much is just changing the altimeter. That's honestly about it. The GFC 500 Autopilot is super awesome. You guys, if you're here, you probably already know about the GFC 500. It does everything. Uh, it flies fully coupled GPS approaches, ILS approaches. We've got climbs, descents, heading mode, nav mode, 
It's it's really an autopilot that speaks for itself. There's plenty of other YouTube videos out there that are going to show you the, the GFC 500 and its features. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that it's totally awesome, and if you're getting an autopilot, in my opinion, there's no better option. So the GMA 245, basically the only, uh, the only thing to consider here is like going remote versus the physical audio panel. I chose to go with the physical audio panel because uh, ultimately I was kind of talked into it. I wanted to go with the with the remote audio panel at first to kind of save some panel space, and I thought it would be easy to use the G3X to do that. But after getting the physical one installed, I'm so glad that it, the physical one is in here. It's really easy to swap between your comms, and, and at just a quick glance you can see what's active and what's not. If a transmission starts to come in for me, I can mute the music, unmute it when it's done, playback. And it's really cool to have all of these things very easily accessible rather than having to go through the touch screen and the buttonology on the G3X. It's right here. It's the same, you know, it's the same location every time, the same button press. Also, it's very easy to show your passengers like, okay, this knob is for music. This one's for intercom, you know, lou uh, quieter, louder. That's easy to explain rather than me having to adjust their volume settings for them. So physical audio panel is... Uh, is really good for, for this particular setup. Maybe if you had a GTN 750, then the uh, then the remote audio panel would make more sense. But with the 650 setup, I think that the uh, I think that the physical one is the the way to go. In my personal opinion, again for for my setup and my needs. Moving on to the GTN, this is the 650 Xi. I was considering at one point keeping the 430 in there, and. Uh, and after talking to the avionics shop some more, we decided that scrap the 430, get the full functionality out of the system. I got good trade-in value for it. Number 157 Papo South. Went with the XI, Center, the latest and greatest. When you're doing a job of, of this size and scale, it just makes sense to pull the trigger on everything and do it all at once. If I would have had a 650 installed later on, like say a year or two from now, I would have gotten less trade-in value for my 430 and it would have been more expensive to go back in and wire in the 650. So it makes sense to do everything at once. Uh, this installation also has the Flightstream 510. Basically the advantage of the Flightstream 510 in this setup is that I can send approaches and I can use database concierge. So I can send uh, approaches, instrument departures, uh, arrivals, that kind of stuff from my iPad to the GTN and use the database concierge feature to update my G3X and GTN databases. Uh, do you need the flight stream in this particular setup? No, because the G3X has a Bluetooth source that will connect your iPad and you can send flight plans. Of course, you're limited. You can't send approaches or instrument pr procedures through the G3X to the GTN, but with the flight stream you can. So it's not like 100% necessary to have the flight stream 510, but you know, user preference. I have it in this installation, and I like it. Uh, as far as the GTN 650 versus the 750, why did I go with the 650 over the 750? Well, for one, the panel is already pretty tight. That's just a characteristic of Moonies. You can see here, especially the F model, the panel is fairly small. So with this stack already, you're seeing that there really isn't room for a 750. Maybe there would have been room if I would have gone remote audio panel and remote transponder and moved the GNC 255 over here. But honestly, I feel like with the 650 and the G3X, really there's no reason that I needed a 750. The 650 does a great job. I think it's big enough. I think the text is big enough, the flight plan. I have no problem reading information, loading procedures. I'll load an instrument approach here, RNAV, GPS, runway 31, preview. I mean, I, I can preview it here. And then, let's see, once I, uh, I'll load the approach and look over here on the G3X, and it cross fills to the G3X. So, and this screen is pretty much the same size, if not bigger than a 750 screen. I, I can't say for sure, but it's pretty close. And I just don't feel like there's anything in this particular setup that a 750 would have gotten me that I that I don't already have. So it kind of felt like we never even is one, two, we never seven, even considered 5. it really because a the panel is small and it would have 
taken up a lot of real estate and perhaps resulted in a kind of a weird looking configuration like the autopilot over here or something that just kind of looks strange. Uh, anyways, the 650 is a great unit. I have zero regrets whatsoever with going with the 650. That plus the G3X display plus the iPad. There's really no reason that, that I needed a 750 in this setup and I, I don't, I feel like that's maybe just a little bit overkill and uh, was not a necessary use of money. So, all right, I think that about covers the 650. I'm super happy with it. I'm glad that I went with the 650 over the 430. Uh, was never even considering the IFD. And down to the GNC 255A here, it's a great backup. I can use it for VORs, ILSs monitoring ground, ATIS, it has reverse frequency lookup, and it identifies who I'm talking to right now. So it's already identifying Rochester ground, Rochester ATIS. You can uh, monitor the standby frequency, that kind of stuff. G so the GNC 255A is a really good backup. Really, in practice, the only way that it's used is monitoring basically ATIS and ground. And if I needed to fly an ILS approach or navigate using VORs due to a 650 going out, then it could be used for that. Over to the GTX 345, ADS-B in, out, FIS-B in. It's just a transponder, but it does everything and it does it well. So not too exciting there. Again, you know, somebody might ask, why did you go with the physical unit? I don't know, I just did, whatever. You can control the transponder through the G3X if you want. But having the physical unit, I guess, is kind of nice. You can get the timer. So, is it really... I don't I don't think it really matters if you have the physical transponder, the remote one. But, here it is. And I guess it's kind of nice to be able to just type in your transponder code as you go. So... So that is pretty much the left to right on this panel setup. There are a lot of good options out there. The GI-275s are a good option, I think, for certain situations. Uh, the Dynon is a good option. But they, uh, as far as I know right now, don't have an autopilot solution. And it sounds like, at least for Moonies, they're not coming out with one anytime soon. And my personal preference is Garmin all the way. Uh, I just, I've always used Garmin, I was trained on Garmin, and I have a, a good relationship with my Garmin installation, or my Garmin dealer, so I think, you know, Garmin's just the way to go, the way, uh, the way that they push the limits on general aviation and, and provide us with these modern solutions, and they come through with what they say they're going to do, I, I support them as a brand, and I think that, that they're the way to go for a, like a highest quality level install for a real professional job like this where you're getting everything basically ripped out and replaced. I love the Garmin stuff. Um, enough on that. So if you guys are, uh, are wanting to ask any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I'll respond to all of your comments. And if you live in, in Minnesota or the Midwest and you want to meet up and go fly somewhere, let's, let's meet up and do that. We can go uh, do lunch and back or whatever. So I'm, uh, I'd love to meet with you guys. I like uh, joining up with other aviators and, and having some fun aviation adventures. So that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. See you later.